Okay, listen, have you ever had a brand new idea and for whatever reason you were afraid to get started? Or maybe you started on the idea, but somewhere along the way, for whatever reason, you seem to lose momentum. See, the thing is, as creators, our ideas have the power and the potential to move the world. But it's very easy for us to get stuck in our heads and stuck in idea land and, and not having our dreams and goals and projects come up off of the paper. So today, I'm gonna share my tips on getting new ideas off the ground so you can get back to making the things that you've always dreamed of. All right, this is episode one of the God Frame Show. Let's get it. Okay, here we go. Welcome to episode one, officially, of the God Frame Show. And I can't tell you how long I've waited to say that. Like, yo, this thing has been in the works and, you know, it's a timely episode because it's been on the paper on my dreams list for way too long. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But first, I'm your host, God Frame, and I'm so glad that you're here sharing your morning commute or your afternoon snack time, what nighttime, bedtime routine, whatever this is, wherever you are listening to this or watching. I'm very, very honored that you decided to spend your time with me, and I really hope that I can give you some value. The whole point of this podcast is I'll be sharing life stories and lessons uh, to help you get unstuck and back to making the art that moves the world. Uh, so I really appreciate you for tuning in. But first, you know, let's kind of lay some groundwork, right? This is episode one, you know what I'm saying? So we got to, you know, kind of lay the foundation, if you will, because I want to start this thing off well. So who is this podcast for? Like, what's, what's the whole point? Like, why are you even listening to this? So the way God gave me this vision, this podcast is for creators. It's for makers. It's for thinkers. Uh, anybody who is producing something for the world to see or for the world to consume. Um, and so I say creative people, but... You know, that that kind of spans a wide gamut, right? I don't want to just think about people in the creative arts, but I think if you're making anything with your mind, with your hands, uh, with your words, like whatever it may be, you are a creative person in my mind. And so I know that as a creative person myself, we get stuck a lot, right? Like, you know, it's one thing to have the technical expertise to like do your thing, whatever your thing is, but it's a whole nother thing when you get stuck mentally or emotionally or even spiritually, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on in our head and in our hearts. And it's easy for us to put up barriers or encounter a barrier that stops us from getting where we need to go in our creative career. Um, and so this podcast is for anybody who's felt stuck. Maybe you're stuck now. Maybe you've been stuck before. Uh, anybody with you know, dreams of having a thriving creative career. You may be doing your creative thing part-time. You may be doing it as a side hustle. Uh, maybe it's even your full-time thing already. I don't know, but either way, you want to thrive in that creative career. This podcast is for you. And I'll add too, um, you know, it's for Christians, not just Christians, obviously. Uh, you might be listening to this and you don't have any sort of faith journey going on. And that's cool. I'm no judgment here, but I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in Jesus. Uh, and so he is the ruler of my life. And so a lot of things that I'll bring up in this podcast, while it's not, quote unquote, a religious or spiritual podcast, and we're not doing sermons and devos and messages and praying and all that stuff, while it's not that, a lot of my faith is going to come into play in some of the things that we talk about because it's the thing that matters most to me in my life. So fair warning, if you're not into that type of stuff, you should probably just click away now. Or if you're nosy and still want to find out how this is going to go down, you're welcome to stay. What's up? This is a safe place. All right. This is going to be a place where you can come and hear encouragement, hear stories. You'll laugh a little bit. You might even cry a little bit. I don't know. Uh, but either way, the main point is to let you know that you're not by yourself as a creative person and the things that you go through, the ups, the downs, the in-betweens, the confusing moments, the exciting, joyful moments, the triumphs, all those things. There's a lot of people, myself included, who have lived through that stuff or are living through it now. 
And so I'm hoping that through sharing these stories and uh, these lessons and these tips that we'll form a community together and connect with one another uh, because we can't do life alone. We're not wired to do life by ourselves. We're wired for relationships. Uh, so before I get too deep into it, I realized that, you know, a lot of you listening may already know who I am. You may know the God Frame brand, but also know that you might be listening to this and not have a stinking clue who I am or what I'm all about. So I want to just kind of give a brief overview um, before I get into today's, you know, tips and tricks and all that stuff. Just kind of want to let you know a little bit about me if we've never met. Uh, I was born in Oakland, California, and uh, it's a cool thing to say, like, man, I was born in Cali, but it's not so cool because I only spent like... I don't know, maybe a year of my life there. I don't know how long, but we moved around a lot because my dad was in the Navy. Um, and so, you know, after the first few years of my life, my parents split and my mom and I ended up moving back to her home state of Arkansas. And that's pretty much where I spent most of my life growing up. Uh, grew up in a town called Batesville, Arkansas. Very, very small town. A uh, lot of lovely people there. It's one of those places where everybody knows everybody's business, right? Like everybody, everybody knows the latest gossip, the latest rumors. Uh, there's no secrets in this town. And uh, it's a very cool place uh, to kind of grow up. And a big part of my upbringing was music and church. You know, my family loved music. I didn't have a whole lot of musicians in my family, but uh, everybody appreciated and still does appreciate music in some form. Um, but church... Man, like, I can't remember a day when I was not in church. You know, my earliest memories were singing in the little kids' choir when I was like five years old. You know, I, I fell in love with Jesus and gave my life to him and was baptized when I was like nine years old. Um, so I've been about church and Christianity for a long time. And, uh, you know, as I got older, you know, my faith grew and so did my interest in music, among a lot of things. So I grew up playing the saxophone, started in sixth grade. Shout out to all my band nerds, you feel me? Stay in band because you never know where it could take you. It actually paid for my college because uh, I ain't have all the money for tuition and all of that stuff. So I went to the University of Central Arkansas and man, I was balancing a lot of stuff. I, oh, I still have a problem with this to this day. Like I'm always carrying too many things on my plate. Um, and so in college, I was balancing schoolwork uh, or lack thereof, <laughs> marching band, uh, Concert band, campus ministry, making beats, recording albums, you know, rapping and performing at youth events, uh, filming music videos by myself because, you know, I couldn't afford to hire anybody. Um, being a student pastor and just like all kinds of stuff and somehow finding time to, you know, squeeze in time with my now wife, Jasmine. It, it was a lot. And I thank God for that season. Uh, but man, I was a busy boy. You feel me? Like, <laughs> I was way too busy. Uh, so now, fast forward to today, I, uh, like I said, Jasmine and I are married. We've been married uh, nine years, and uh, we have two beautiful kids, JL and Jensen. Uh, they're five and seven years old right now. And uh, most of my day is spent either, you know, running my video production company, Lamar Haley Productions, or, you know, speaking at events. Uh, and producing music for artists, uh, as well as for TV and film and video games. Uh, so I still got a lot going on, right? Still, <laughs> I'm juggling a lot of things, but, you know, as if I didn't have enough going on, I am now starting this brand new podcast. And so having tried a lot of things, I know that starting a new thing can be very scary. It can be very confusing. It can lead to a lot of self-doubt, a lot of insecurity, a lot of, you know, fear of God knows what. There's so many things that are scary about this. Um, but I do know that if it's really something that you care about and it's really something that God has given you to do, it's always worth it to just go for it. So today, I really want to just give you some tips for your next creative adventure. Like If you're listening to this podcast and you're still, you know, sticking with me up until this, this point, I'm sure that you're a creative person and you can probably relate to, you know, having dreams and goals and ideas and visions, you know, but not always starting the best way. Right. So I got some tips for you, uh, starting with number one. Here we go.
Biggest tip for getting anything new off the ground is start with the why and not the how. Start with the why and not the how. You know, maybe you're like this, but for me, anytime I'm trying to put something new together, uh, a new idea, a new project, new whatever, I always get trapped at some point before I even start trying too hard to put all the logistical pieces together, right? So like you get the creative spark, right? Like God gives you this new vision, this new idea. You've been praying, you've been fasting, like you, you got all this inspiration and you're like, oh my God, oh man, I'm going to do this. It's going to be awesome. And everybody's going to see it and they're going to be like, oh my God, oh, it, was, it was great. And that's how people talk when they're excited, right? Like there's all, all this excitement about what you're about to do. But then for me, my next step is usually, oh, okay, but how much is it going to cost? And how are we going to do, okay, and who's going to do it? And then where are we going to get the materials? And then how much are those materials going to cost? Oh, and then what, how, what, when are we going to do it? How much time do we have? And like all this just tangled spaghetti noodle web knot of logistical craziness, probably way too early in the process. Granted, logistics are necessary. Figuring out steps is necessary. Counting up costs is necessary. But if you try to start with that stuff too soon, it's easy to get off track and to derail your project and not have any energy to even go for it way before you even push the start button. And so my tip for this is to remember your why. I know a lot of people say it these days, but it's true. Um, having a strong why is what's going to keep you in the game. For me, you know, talking about this podcast, for example, there's a lot of reasons why I want to do this. Uh, one is because I want to do it for fun. Like sometimes in life, you should just do some stuff for fun, all right? Give yourself permission. You ain't got to make money with everything, all right? Another reason why I want to do this is I like talking. If you can't tell already, <laughs> if you know me personally, you know I can go, right? I can ramble on and on and on. And it just makes sense. Like, yo, I should be talking on a mic somewhere, right? Like I love talking. And admittedly, sometimes I like the sound of my own voice. All right, don't tell nobody, but it's true. It's just me and you right here, okay? Don't tell nobody. But it's conceited. It's whatever, but I don't care. I like the voice that God gave me. It's crunchy. My, my wife says it sounds like it's got a snare behind it. She she told me that a few years ago, and I'm like, oh, yo, I'm never changing the way I talk. Like, I love this, that little, uh, that little crunch in the background. Um, another reason why I want to do this is to have a creative outlet. I'm sure you can relate to this, but, man, I I have so many ideas squirreling around in my brain at any given moment of the day to where sometimes I just feel like I'm just stuffed up, like like I got a cold or, you know, a stuffy nose. Like, I just got to get these ideas out. And I think a podcast is going to be a great creative outlet for me not to go crazy. You feel me? <laughs> like, it's too much, too many ideas up there. And I got to get them out. I also want to share some stories from my life, you know, things that I may not have said on YouTube before or things I may not have told people in conversation because um, I've got stories and I think other people have stories and I want to, we're going to hear some of theirs as well, um, mainly to let people like you know that you're not alone, that you're not living this creative, crazy human journey by yourself. And my main aim, honestly, is to give you hope and encouragement, make you giggle a little bit, make you smile sometimes, make you feel good and have just a little extra creative oomph to keep going and doing your thing. All right. So those are my main whys. There's a few more, but I don't have time to list them all. Um, but that's mainly the reasons why I'm doing this. So ask yourself, like, what are your main reasons? What are your big whys for doing what you're about to do? whatever that new thing is. What are your whys? Okay, so my second tip is you gotta break up with your excuses, right? If you've ever been in a relationship with somebody who is like, oh, they, you just know they ain't good for you. They're not adding anything to your life. <laughs> We've all been there, I'm sure. You know, you thought you was in love at first, but then after a while, you're like, mm, you're actually toxic. I, <laughs> I don't want to fool with you. Uh, you got to break up. All right. Uh, but you got to do the same thing with your excuses. You got to break up with them. Our brains, check this out. They're wired for many things, but mainly they're wired to keep us safe. 
right? They're mainly wired for safety. And so our brains love things that are familiar, things that are, you know, the status quo, patterns, normalcy, routines. Like our brains love that stuff because it tells our mind, oh, we're good. This is the same thing I saw yesterday. We're safe. Let's proceed. So anytime you have these new ideas, this new stuff that you're trying to do that's out of the norm, your mind is automatically going to try to find excuses for you not to do it. It's like, mm, what is this? I never have not encountered this before. What is this new idea? What is this new concept? This can't be safe. Let's keep doing what we're doing, right? What's wrong with what we're doing? Uh, and you start to think of a million reasons why you shouldn't do a thing. All these excuses just come out of nowhere and you're like, nah. eventually it's easy to kind of talk yourself out of this new creative thing that you're trying to do. For me, you know, like I said, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Uh, I've actually found an old note, like an old Evernote entry. I think the first, the earliest entry I had for doing a podcast was like 2018. And I'm recording this now in 2022. So it's been like four years since I had the idea and the desire to do this doggone thing until now, me recording the first episode. And it sounds crazy, but you and I both know it's easy to do. You got stuff in your notebook right now that you that's probably been sitting there for 10, 11, 12, 15 years that you haven't done because you haven't broken up with your excuses. For me, some of my excuses were I didn't think I had the right equipment. So I would go out and like save up money and then buy equipment and then be like, uh, no, okay, I don't have any ideas. So what am I going to say? So then I spent a long time writing ideas and episodes. And, you know, then I was like, man, now I'm afraid to look like a copycat because so many people are doing a podcast, right? Have you ever felt like that? Like the thing that you want to do badly, you're scared to do it because so many other people are doing it means it's working for somebody, right? So why not give it a go? Uh, I was also afraid no one would listen. Um, which is, man, a heart issue that I'm still working through. Um, and, you know, one thing that God is teaching me is like, man, you know what? It doesn't matter if if one person is watching or listening to this podcast. That person matters. You matter. You're clicking and watching and spending time with me. You matter. Your story matters. Your journey matters. And so I've got to treat this with care and respect you enough to give you all I got. You know what I'm saying? Make it worth it for you tuning in. So you, you can't be afraid that nobody's going to consume your stuff if you really believe in your stuff. Um, other excuses I had was like, man, I'm just too busy. Like there's no, I have no time for this. I'm a whole husband, a whole father, a whole entrepreneur, creative uh, person. Like I, I can't, I cannot fit another thing in my life. But eventually I just had to say, man, you know what? Bump all them excuses. I'm breaking up with you. You're not good for me. All right. You don't love me. You don't support me. I'm out of here. And I just had to start taking steps and just do it. Right. Just like screw the excuses. I'm doing this. I got another tip for you, but before I get there, we're going to take a quick break, uh, go to our sponsors, and I'll be right back when we're done. This podcast is brought to you by Lamar Haley Entertainment, helping global brands and creators leverage music, film and TV, and digital content to engage audiences on a human level. Discover more at LamarHaley.com. Being a creator isn't easy. Whether you're juggling last minute deadlines, working with difficult clients or team members, or you're just not feeling confident in the things you create, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, frustrated, and like no one understands what you're going through. Well, here at Team Godframe, we got you. That's why we created the Godframe mailing list, a weekly-ish newsletter full of stories, tips, and inspiration to help you thrive on your creative journey so you can get back to making art that moves the world. Get that creative boost you've been waiting for from Godframe straight to your inbox. Sign up now at godframe.com slash mailing dash list. Got a question you want to get answered on the show? Or you just want to give a shout out? Now you can. With the Anchor platform, you can record a personalized voice message for a chance to be featured on an upcoming episode of The Godframe Show. Leave a message now at godframe.com forward slash podcast. All right, and we're back. So my last tip for you today uh, for 
getting a new creative idea off the ground is one that I think has been mentioned a lot, uh, but I think it's true. Might think it's kind of cheesy, might think it's kind of cliche or whatever, but the idea is to play to an audience of one. My daughter, uh, she's seven, and I think ever since she was whew, three years old, two, three years old, I don't know, like pretty much as soon as she could walk and crawl, uh, she's been a dancing maniac. Girl has a lot of energy, a lot of spunk, a lot of pizzazz, and she loves to dance. <laughs> Uh, and every time she dances, you know, you know, little kids, they dance weird anyway. Like they got, they got some of the weirdest moves. Like it just looks like something's wrong with them <laughs> when, they, when they dance. Uh, anytime she's doing her thing, though, it's like nobody's watching or better. It's like everybody's watching because she loves to put on a show. But she she does her moves and she does her thing and she sings her songs and she makes her music and whatever it is she loves. She does it with so much heart. And so much passion and so much like, mm, like you can see it on her face. She's like, look, I'm getting it. I, it may look goofy to you, but I am killing it right now. She doesn't care who's watching. And it inspires me every time I see her do it because I'm, anytime I make something, I'm always tempted, you know, to think about what everybody's thinking. Maybe you can relate, right? Like I can't tell you how many projects, how many initiatives, even simple things like a social media status or a photo how many things I've overthought and been afraid to do and just ended up not doing, like literally talking myself out of them simply because I was afraid of what other people were going to think. And my encouragement to you is if you've ever felt like that or if you feel like that now, I want you to forget who's watching because they didn't make you anyway. If God put that idea in you, God put that vision in you, that dream in you, whatever it is, that new, oh, that thing that keeps you up at night and you can't stop thinking about it and you can't stop dreaming about it. If God gave it to you, then he should be your biggest audience. Let him be your biggest fan. All right. Don't like, like, yo, when you put out draft one, don't even show it to nobody. Show it to God. Hey, God, what you think? This, this V1 right here. This is the rough cut. What you think? All right, here go draft two. Lord, what you think? You gave me this dream. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and that may sound kind of silly. You don't have to literally do that. But, you know, that's the mindset I think we should have um, as Christian creators. If God said do this or he gave you the ability, the gift, talent, skill set to do your thing, like he should really be the only source of approval that you're looking for. He's already smiling on you, matter of fact regardless of what you do or don't make, right? Like he's, he already loves you. He can't love you any more or less. And if he did, that wouldn't even be up to you. Nothing you can do can make him love you more or less. So create out of that freedom that he's your main audience and he's already clapping. He's already cheering you on. He's already rooting for you because you're his. Okay, so those are my tips for today. And at the end of every episode, we're gonna have a segment where I'm gonna give you a challenge, all right? This is episode one, but we are gonna go off with a bang, all right? My challenge today is I want you to think of one thing that you've been wanting to do. One creative endeavor, one creative project, one business, one whatever it is that you have been neglecting or hesitating or procrastinating to start. And I want you to pick a date a date on your calendar where you're going to take the first step or better yet, a date on your calendar where you're going to take the last step and you're going to launch it and be done. All right. I want you to put that on your calendar and hold yourself to it. Bonus points. If you can get a friend to hold you accountable as well. Shout out to one of my friends, Risha Leandra, who is one of the main reasons I actually finally hit record on this doggone podcast because we've been challenging each other uh, to like take action on our dreams and goals for the rest of the year. And this has been one of mine for way too long. But anywho, back to you. Find someone to hold you accountable and see how it goes. I have a feeling you're going to accomplish way more than you ever thought you could just by taking that first step. All right. 
and hit me up too. Like, I want to know how this is going for you. All right. So you can find me at Godframe.com. You can also find me at Godframe on social media everywhere. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. DM me, email me, send me a message, whatever. Um, and I know you're going to crush it. So, hey, thank you so much for tuning in for episode one of the Godframe show. I think we're going to have a lot of fun this season. Uh, I've been your host, Godframe, and I'm really, 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 really grateful you were here. I hope you have a phenomenal week. And as always, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Get up!